So I think a lot of us don't take enough time to look back on our year and reflect on how far we've moved forward with the progress we've made, especially when we are highly driven and always chasing that next goal or that next objective on long-term goal horizons. So I wanted to take some time right now to talk about how I do an annual review and reflection because every December I find myself gravitating towards a more reflective period. While we cross many different thresholds each year, there's the start of a new week, there's the start of a new month, your birthday, a pet or partner's birthday, as the clock hits zero on New Year's Eve and the new year officially starts, this is a particularly powerful change for a lot of us. Progress is made by moving forward, but without looking backward, you risk going in circles. We read biographies to learn from those who came before us in the hopes of not repeating their mistakes, but many of us fail to form any clear lessons from our autobiographies. Doing a year-end review helps you to write a new chapter in your book of life, to dig into what was important to you, what you learned, how you changed, and who changed with you. As the last few days of the year trickle into view, it's a time when we naturally think about what has gone on in the past year and review the time that we have spent. Has it been used wisely? Or are there things that you wish you'd have done differently? So why do a year-end review? We're all driven by this sense of progress. And if you're anything like me, the end of the year becomes a time when you get that urge to reflect back on the year that has passed and what the future holds in the new year. We can just as readily set goals on December 1st as we can on January 1st. But the crossing of this threshold is something that holds this archetypal significance for us and the journey we follow through our lives. And change comes from these powerful transitions, not just how we do things, but also who we are. So to make sense of the bigger picture of our life story, we need to delineate these chapters, which is why the year-end review is very helpful in this process. What gets included in your year-end review is based on your priorities. If you're trying to get started with doing an annual review for the first time, or you wanna find something that works better from your current process, here are some of the recommended starting points that I find most useful. I'll include down in the description a rapid fire list of the topics and questions to prompt your own review, as well as any links that I mention as we talk about these different areas that I like to focus on. So the first thing that I start with is reviewing my calendar and any notes that I took. Reviewing your year begins with your calendar and any notes that you've created in the past year. If you don't keep track of at least some of the ways you spend your time in your calendar or note taking in a journal, now is a good time to start. By having the thoughts and experiences of your life captured in the moment, you are keeping a much more permanent record of the stories you are creating. Anytime I feel like I haven't had enough fun, experiences, or accomplished enough for myself, I scroll back through my calendar and the notes that I've captured, and I can see more clearly the progress there. And so it helps you to look back through all of these moments to get that overview of your year as you review it. This is also one of the reasons that I think keeping a bullet journal or other simple form of physical journal is so valuable. Notes get scattered across different apps and devices on our phones and computers. And unless we're following the building a second brain methodology very closely, you're not going to know where to find the info. But in a notebook or two, you can have a full year's worth of your quick thoughts, events, and experiences, and this is my favorite way of seeing what the story of my past year looked like. So what were the highlight moments or experiences? What were some of the best things you accomplished? What challenges did you face? All of these questions that you can review when looking back through your notes will help you to hold yourself accountable when you think about what your next year is also going to look like. 
more things that you can take note on as you review your notes from each month this year. What new places did you visit? Who did you meet? And what relationships did you build? What new skills did you acquire? And what areas make up your life? So now let's talk about what areas make up your life. If you listen to any self-help guru out there, they will have their framework for the different dimensions of your life. Like the deep health complete picture, these are slices of the pie of life that we consider when evaluating the current moment of our life and the time frame that we have been through. Some of these systems give you 10 sections, others six, or maybe as little as four. However you want to evaluate your experiences, I think that somewhere between six and eight is ideal so that you can get a full picture of the things like your work satisfaction, relationships, finances, and experiences, as well as the deep health components like spiritual health and mental health. Consider where you're currently at with each of these slices of your life. Looking at where you've come from over the past year will help you to appreciate the progress that you have made. Now doing a deep health review. While there are many other ways that we can evaluate our life, one of the most impactful to me is to look through the deep health lens to get a clear picture of what our overall health and the different aspects looked like and how they have changed in the past year. Because our health is multifaceted, it makes a difference to look at a deep health framework to understand what is going well in your life and what needs more work and more focus to get back on track. Doing your deep health review with the deep health questionnaire doesn't just have to be done once per year, it's also helpful to use whenever you face changes or set new goals during the year. So I've included in the description below a link to download the Deep Health Questionnaire. It'll help you to see your start and end points as the result of any goal. Training for a marathon may improve your physical health and your emotional health if you're an anxious person who likes to have a focused goal to work towards but all of those hours spent training might take away from your social health or diminish your mental health, making it hard to focus on work. By completing this deep health questionnaire and comparing it to past scores, you can start to see these patterns that emerge as you set particular goals and what that does to these different dimensions of your health. Make sure you save your results so that you can look back on it again next year or whenever you do your next goal setting or need to go through a change and see where your health is at. Now let's talk about the books you've read. Another category that I use when reviewing my year is to see what books I have read. I used to do this out of competitiveness to see how many books I could read during the year, which is why I stopped using Goodreads as consistently to track books. But I do still like to log all the books that I've read in Goodreads because it's so simple to rate and record any of the books that I've read and gives me a glance at the timeline of books for the year. I think that books are an important category to review as you reflect on your year because along with any of the notes that you've taken in your journal or any of the experiences that you've had throughout the year that you see on your calendar, Books tell you more about what you were curious about and wanted to learn in the past year. This is particularly true if you do read nonfiction and are trying to learn and acquire new skills with the books that you choose to read. A lot of people starting out their journeys in their 20s and early 30s are seeking out mentors and wanting to find someone to guide them along the way. What they often don't realize is how valuable it can be to find mentors through the wisdom that those individuals have already shared in the books that they've written. Books are the best bargain on wisdom because for 20 or $30, you can get the condensed experience of two to four years of research and writing and often decades of life experience from those people you dream of working more closely with. And this all leads us to progress for what comes next. No matter what areas of your life you review and how you evaluate this annual review, it's important to look at each year as a stepping stone and progress forward towards bigger goals. 
we will always encounter obstacles and setbacks along the way. So as you take the time to close out the year, look back on what has happened for you in the last 12 months so that you can better prepare for where your journey takes you next. Hopefully you won't experience the same trials and tribulations next year as you did this year, but if you've reviewed and looked for the patterns that emerge, you will be better off at preventing that from happening as well. So set your sights on a new theme or the continuation of the theme that defines the current chapter of your life and prepare yourself to start the new year ready to take on your vision. And I'm curious to hear your thoughts on this as well. Leave a comment below on what types of questions or prompts you ask yourself when you do an annual review and what did you take away from this video that you're going to apply towards reflecting on the past year so that you can set new goals for the new year.